Hi guys, and welcome back to Reads Readers with your host, Clint. And one, I don't know how the sound thing is going to go. I am trying a new mic for the first time, and I just thought this would be a perfect opportunity to try. I've already filmed this video once, <clears throat> and the sound quality and the way it filmed did not turn out the way I wanted it. So, but... As y'all see the title of this video, it is Reintroducing Me to You Guys. I have been doing BookTube for almost, I want to say a little over six years, if I've done my math correctly. And I don't think, and I, and I know I've gotten some new people here, and I don't think people truly know, like, who I am, what I'm about, all this other stuff. So I thought with this whole new rebranding thing that I'm doing that I can <clears throat> introduce myself and let you guys know who I am, what you're supposed what you're going to expect and stuff when you stop by Reads Readers. First off, I am Clint. I am from Oklahoma. I am a gay slash queer married man to my lovely husband sterling who we've been together for four years married for two never thought in a million years i would be able to marry my best friend so but with that being said a lot of my content here does typically lean a little more on the queer side of things and that's okay that's just because, as a queer male, I typically enjoy queer content. I like to read queer books and stuff like that. So, moving from that, I asked a few of my friends and stuff, what type of genres do they think of when they first think of me? And a lot of them had similar answers and these were like the two standout genres that i feel like everybody associates when they think of reads readers the first one on that topic of queerness is i read a lot of queer literature now as a gay male do I read a lot of M.M. romance? Yes. If you look behind me, there's a lot of M.M. romance. But I actively like to find other queer identities and stuff like that. Lately, I've been wanting to search more. Do I, I've been reading more demisexual sapphic representations i i've been actively looking for trans i've been actively looking for each of these identities because we all live underneath the umbrella of the rainbow and i want to be able to celebrate every single color of the community but i don't read just queer romance I do read queer literature that are a little more on the hard-hitting, like this one kind of hit me over the head, and I kind of saw myself a little too seen in it. Um, I do read books that are like cozy mystery memos, or thrillers, fantasies, paranormals. I look for queer in, like, everything. The minute I see that word queer, it sparks my interest, and I'm like, ooh, girl, let's check that out. Or I'm actively looking for more polyamorous representation, because I feel like we have more white shoes slash reverse harem, but we don't have a lot of poly represented. And that is one identity that I like would like to learn more of. Now, outside of queer literature, or actually not outside of, we'll get to that one in a second. 
with queer literature, I am a co-host of a book called a book club called Book Addicts Anonymous, aka Fa, because we are the rainbow sheep of the family. And with Ba, I co-host with my booktube little sister, Hope, from Canada, from Hope's, from It's Hope's Books. And we just welcomed Lori from the Chatty Bookworm to join us on this journey, where we are actively looking for queer joy. When I say queer joy is we are doing queer rom-coms mostly, but we are looking for books with every aspect of the queer community involved. From Mel Mel, sapphic, trans, demi, non-binary, genderqueer, two-spirited, asexual, gray sexual, uh, trans mask, trans femme, drag, every aspect of the community. And we are also bringing on you guys, other booktubers, followers, book creators, people who like to read on each month to join us to discuss a book. So even if it's just the four of us, we're still spreading a little queer joy. Now, outside of that, something I am typically known for as well is my shapeshift it is really hard to do this one handed my shapeshifters and urban fantasy my paranormal i am typically known more for werewolves were coyotes were cats were dogs type thing like i said i find queer representation in almost everything but i am also known for Queerness in other, not queerness, other types of paranormals. Sorry, my brain keeps wanting to go back to queer literature, but we're on paranormal. I said I already filmed this once. Now my brain is scattering. Gotta love the ADHD. Because it makes me spicy. <laughs> Stupid. But I'm known for things like honey badger shapeshifter romances. Um, maybe a, how do I pitch this one? Maybe a female turned into a llama for sex trafficking and an ex-cop who's the son of a wolf and a witch discovers her in a car after a body falls from the ceiling. What was it? The tagline is New York City delivered, distracting him with three corpses and a miniature llama with a spitting problem and an attitude. This is basically that, but more. And I also do like my witches, my vampires, my warlocks, magicians, and everything under the urban fantasy umbrella. Now, I don't typically align with high, high, high fantasies. Like, stuff like Brandon Sanderson does not work for me. So, I typically lean more to the urban fantasy. And on the fantasy side of things, with one of my booktube besties, Amanda from Amanda's Booktopia, also, if I mention anybody in this video, they will be linked down below. Um, with Amanda, I co-host a book called a book club called Fiction Falls, where her love of romanticy, my love of urban fantasy, we decided to bring it together and be able to find new favorites for both of us in each other's genres. I want to read more romanticy. She wants to check out some urban fantasy. And we just want to talk about books and love them with you guys. So, love it. Now, outside of 
genres like that, I do typically read a lot of like mystery thrillers, cozy mysteries, YA thrillers, YA horror. I am dipping my toes and trying to find some things and like more of the, like the darker, creepier side of like things. Um, I do read some romance. Typically, when it comes to romance, I do typically slot side a little bit more to rom-coms or my sports. That's a more of a me thing. I don't really read things like sci-fi. But I do read some, I do on the occasion read some middle grade fantasies and stuff like that. So you'll get a whole bunch of everything. I don't only read queer literature. I That is things that I try to actively have at least one or two going every month. But I do typically try to read a, a lot of varieties of things. Um, outside of the genres, some of the books that I am known for, I did pull a couple of people, and the first one that comes to almost everybody's mind is Green Creek, is the Green Creek series by T.J. Klune, i.e. Gay Werewolves. I have forced, I don't know how many people to read this series. I have hosted a pack-along on this channel, which we may do again. I'm contemplating bringing back the pack along next year to do the traditionally published edition with the new like bonus short stories and stuff that have been added to them. If that's something you guys would be interested in doing. Um, I'm also known for Heartstopper. I don't know why I grabbed the TV show cover. I just grabbed one of the many, many, many editions of the series that I have. Also, you can see right behind me, right there, all the editions of the Green Creek series and then the rest of TJ Klein. But I do typically rave about this graphic novel series, book series. This is one of the most wholesome things, and I wish I had this growing up to see that I was seen and I do exist. Um, another book that I am known for, which is my all-time favorite book, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on any of these books, but Red, White, and Royal Blue, I read at a time that I needed it. It felt like such a warm hug. Um, this was the first Net Galley arc I had ever gotten. I have now read all of Casey McQuestons on Net Galley. Well, we're not going to talk about the pairing. That one, I have issues. But this one, I read before it came out. I read it four times before it came out. And then it, when it did get published, I read it two more times that year. And since I read it those six times, I've read it six more times. And this has only been out since... When did it get published? 2019? 2020? 2019. This I read every year during my birthday month. I, or at least I typically try to... This is something I need when I'm feeling down. Um, there is a spot in here that I do still have a paper clip in of a quote that I used in my um, in my vows. I know it's not one of her quotes, but it's in. Um, where it says, I think perhaps Hamilton said it better in a letter to Eliza. You engross my thoughts to, you engross my thoughts too entirely to allow me to think of anything else. You not only employ my mind all day, but you intrude upon my sleep. I meet you in every dream, and when I wake, I cannot close my eyes again for ruminating on your sweetness. And that quote just 
that one and then this one I think I also used, which was Allen Ginsberg to Peter Orlovsky. Thou I long for actual sunlight, contact between us. I miss you like a home. Shine back, honey, and think of me. Ugh, just the quotes that they used, the stories, the movie, everything. Um, and then the other three ones I'm not known for as much as this first three, but I did have a couple of people point this one out in particular. I know my friend Karina. This is one that we both love, and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I have four other editions over here. Also, this is a cover from Etsy. It's just on the paperback. Speaking of Karina, she gifted this to me, and I just have to show you guys Patrocles and Achilles. This is my second favorite book of all time. I sob so hard. It's not even funny. Something I just realized, all the books that I'm sitting here talking about that I'm known for are my top three favorite series and my top three favorite books of all time. Huh. I'm not predictable, am I? Um, the, my third favorite book of all time, and the only non-queer one that I'm really typically known for, is Say You Swear by Megan Brandy, which took me on a Megan Brandy journey where I am still trying to read all of her books. I am so behind this year. It was supposed to do it, wrap it up this year, but we'll see if that happens. Life is life and TBRs are TBR. Right? But I picked this up on my own, on a whim. I saw a couple of TikToks about it. Actually, I think I saw five TikToks in a row talking about it, and two of them were just people uncontrollably sobbing, and I needed to know why. I will just say, if you're listening to the audiobook of this, and you get towards, like, the middle, towards the end, middle, and you get to, like, the second half, don't be driving. I almost wrecked my car. I literally had to pull into a business, and I sat there and cried for 20 minutes before I could control myself to finish driving home. We're not going to talk about it. And then the last one, my friend Lori does like to point out that this is one of the series she thinks of me, and that is the Soulbound series by Haley Turner right here, which I typically like to promote this one as Shadow Hunters by Cassandra Clare, but make it adult and make it queer. And then add a little bit of Jim Butcher's Dresden Files humor and magic. And you've got the Soulbound series. Which is amazing. I think more people need to read this. So I'm debating about either bringing back the pack along. Or doing a Soulbound along. I might call it like the bot. Like, we have Disney bounding, so it might be the bounding along. Comment down below and let me know which one you would typically want to see more of. Would you rather do a deep dive into doing a pack along where we can read it together, or I can do spoilery themed videos deep diving into each individual book? Or I can do that with the Soulbound series. Let me know. Now, outside of books, some of the things that I am typically known for is Disney, specifically Stitch, because I don't know if it will show it. My wedding ring has Stitch on it. Sterling's has Stitch on it. So, and outside of that, I'm known for my Care Bears. Funshine being my favorite, followed by Cheer Bear, who we've always called 
and we always had my, my sister represented, and I always represented Funshine. So, outside of that, what you're going to get on this channel is, with the new rebranding and stuff, I'm going to try to keep this channel more on the kooky, campy, carefree um, kind of life. Um, I had a weird dream the other night where someone in the dream called me the bubblegum pop of booktube. And I can't get that thought out of my head. If you don't know what bubblegum pop music is, you should totally go look it up. Think Hilary Duff, Lindsay Lohan, early 2000s poppy music, click five, Jesse McCartney, stuff like that. Cute, sweet. And I have decided if I am going to dip into kind of like spookier ideas and things, I'm going to be a little bit more on the spoopy side of it with it instead of spooky. It's me. And I'm wondering if you guys, not wondering, but you guys have probably noticed there's a new tagline on this channel and i would like to explain a little bit more about that and why we went about the thing of having a new tagline our new tagline is embrace your inner rainbow also i just realized something you'll learn that i i space out before we get into the Embrace Your Inner Rainbow, I forgot to tell you guys, my last name is Reed, like you read a book, hence the name Reed's Readers. In the first filming of this video, I talked about that. I don't think I did that in this. My bad. But, so, back to the tagline of Embrace Your Inner Rainbow. What that means to me is, is how the rainbow is made up of different um seven different colors make up the rainbow which means to me each of you guys have potential to have because after every rainstorm comes a rainbow which means taking every aspect of yourself that makes up you the good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty, all of it, blend it together, embrace that, and love yourself for you. Because before we can, before we can uplift or promote others, we need to dive into ourselves and make sure we're doing okay. So to me, embracing your inner rainbow is embracing every aspect of yourself to love yourself, which is something that I am trying to do more of for myself. So I thought it was like a perfect way to bring y'all in to a little bit more of me. Um, a little queer history lesson here. The original rainbow flag had eight colors on it. And each one represented a different aspect. So to me, embracing my inner rainbow is taking each of these aspects and embracing it within myself. Now that journey is different for all of y'all. Now, with the rainbow colors, it did start off with hot pink, which was dropped, I think, in the early or the late 80s, I think. If I remember correctly. Don't ask me time, time and stuff. But hot pink represented sex. The joy of the embracing your sexuality. Being, in, embracing your queerness. The more, the older I've gotten, the more I know gay just doesn't fully define me, which is why I use terms like queer to define me, because I am more attracted to masculinity. And I know some of y'all are like looking at my husband going, really? But it's like that inner masculinity of the, it's like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. But after hot pink, there was red, which is life, 
the life force, the blood within us. Then you know, orange, which is healing, which is something we all need to do is mentally heal ourselves. And then yellow is sunlight, which is taking in all the positivity so you can grow with green in the nature. Um, turquoise slash light blue, depending on which flag you were looking at, was embracing the magic and the art, your creativity side, something that makes you unique, makes you flourish, makes you magical. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, being normal is vastly overrated. Comment down below if you can tell me what movie that is from. Um, Indigo is for the serenity, the calm after the storm. And then violet is just violet slash purple, depending on who wants to use the word, is embracing your inner spirit. Basically, what I mean by embracing your inner spirit, not a lot of people are, you don't have to be like pagan and stuff to embrace this, what I mean when I'm talking about stuff like this. Um, have you watered your water sign? Water signs like cancers need to be like, sometimes we just need to cry. Sometimes we need to take a hot shower. It helps calm us. Um, have you guys fertilized your earth signs? Have you burned your fire signs? Have you fanned your air signs? Sometimes we need to do that in order to help us mentally clear ourselves and that to me all of that combined to me is embracing your inner rainbow loving yourself and having the best life you can possibly have even when the shoe drops the minute you love yourself truly oh the possibilities are endless and that is what i'm hoping for my future is learning how to take each of the aspects of myself things i like the things i don't like the good the ugly and loving it myself because that is something i don't do enough of it's also another thing on this channel i am very open about my mental health but that's all I've got for you guys. I hope you guys liked this introduction. If you're new, welcome. I hope you find that this is such this is a safe space. You can come and be your authentic self no matter who it is. Come and join the book pack. Come talk about books. If you have any queer or paranormal books to recommend to me that you think I should totally check out, let me know down below. I am always wanting to come up with new ideas and stuff and maybe reading some of y'all's favorites that maybe I've never heard of or I haven't gotten to. Could be some fun, inter interesting content for you guys. Also, if you're new, stop by. Comment down below and let me know. Tell me about yourself. I love getting to know my followers, the people in this community, this, what I, what I like to call a book pack. We have our book dragons who hoard the books. We have our bookworms which read all the books. You have your book goblins that do both. And to me, a book pack is a community of book lovers. We are made up of dragons. We are made up of worms. We are made up of goblins. We are all of us together enjoying, celebrating, and promoting literature. Because I think that's what the world needs more of. Is love. Sweet love. Sorry. <laughs> Let's just say I'm special. <laughs> that was stupid. 
But again, if you're new, might as well subscribe. Come join us. Um, and if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Um, if you're a returning person, hi, welcome back, fam. Um, and I hope you guys liked getting to re-know me. Getting to let me sit down and have a chill chat with you guys. So, until next time, guys. Um, don't forget to embrace your inner rainbow love yourself, and I hope you have a blessed and amazing day. Until next time, oh, bye!